Hello students. So uh, you can see this is Cambridge IGCSC Physics Paper 2 Multiple Choice Extended. It's 0625-23 May June 2023. So we are going to solve this paper. So let's start with question 1. The speed time graph shows the motion of an object. Okay, you can see the speed time graph. As you know, this part over this part, you can see the object is accelerating. Here is the constant velocity and the object is again deaccelerating. Okay, now how far does the object travel at constant speed? So see, this part represents the constant speed. So what was the speed? The speed was uh, 5 meter per second. The object is moving with a speed of 5 meter per second. And for how much time? So time is from 5 to 15. That means the time is 10 seconds. Okay, now the question is how far does the object travel? So distance is speed into time. So speed is 5 into 10. So that will be 50 meters. So the object has traveled 50 meter with a constant speed. So B is the correct option. Okay, next one. Which statement, uh, question two, which statement about a falling object accelerating close to earth's surface is correct? So now object is falling and it's obvious that when the object is falling, it is undergoing an acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meter per second square. You know this, okay. First part, the weight of the object is increasing. See, this statement is only wrong. See, weight of the object remains constant. It is not increasing. And the force of air resistance on an object is decreasing. No, this is a wrong correct, uh, like statement. <coughs> B, the weight of the object and the force of air resistance on the object are of equal magnitude. It cannot be because the weight acts in the downward direction and the air resistance acts in the upward direction. Okay, air resistance. Now we know that when the object is falling, it is moving under an acceleration g, which is 9.8 meter per second square. So if there is an acceleration, there is a resultant force. And so hence these two forces cannot be equal because otherwise the resultant force will be zero. Hence b is also not correct. C part. The weight of the object is constant, but the force of air resistance are not on the object is increasing yes the weight of the object remains constant throughout the motion and also the force of air resistance is increasing because as the object is falling down its speed is increasing because of this acceleration so hence the air resistance is all will also increase with the speed so hence i think d c is the correct part d the weight of an object is less no no it's not possible <clears throat> for the weight of an object to be less than the force of resistance because otherwise the object will fly. So second C part is the correct one. Uh, now question three. An aircraft is moving at 60 meter per second in a northerly direction. When a crosswind from the east starts to blow, the speed of the wind is 13 meter per second. Okay. What is the magnitude of aircraft's velocity when the wind is blowing? So let's uh, draw this in a uh, uh, like whiteboard. See, it's saying the aircraft is moving in the northerly direction. Okay, now this direction is north and then the wind starts to blow towards east. As you know that this is east, west, north, south. So, so <clears throat> you can see the, the speed, <clears throat> the crosswind from east. So, it's from east, which is at a speed of 13 meter per second. So, from east means from east will be that the wind is blowing in this direction. So this is 13 and this they have given out to be 60 meter per second. It's obvious that now because of this wind, the direction of the aeroplane velocity will be this. Okay. Now as we can, we can see that this is east. This is from east and this is going north. So this is 90 degree. And this is the velocity of the aircraft which can easily find by the Pythagoras theorem. So this V square will be equals 13 square plus 60 square so what will be v v will be under root of this 13 square plus 60 square so if you solve this 13 square is actually 169 and 60 square is 3600 so 169 plus 3600 <clears throat> plus 169 this is how much 3769 if you and if you under root of this answer this will be around 61.39 meter per second so see what's the uh, we can see 61.39 that means c is the correct one rounding it off so this 61 
third C is the correct answer. <coughs> okay. Now let's move on to the fourth one. Two rectangular blocks consist of different materials. Four different methods are suggested to compare the two masses. Okay. Now to compare the two masses, okay, compare the acceleration with which they fall freely. So this option is not correct because you know this option not because <coughs> because in fact if you take different masses of the body, if and if you take one kg and you take hundred kg and you and you just make them fall freely, so the acceleration is same, which is nine point eight for both of them, irrespective of the masses. So one is not a correct statement. Compare the values of the length into breadth into height. No, because this will just give you the volume. And hang the third one. Sorry, hang each in turn from the same spring. Compare the extension. Yeah, three is the is you know the is the good way because <coughs> the uh, the uh, like among these two, the which will have more mass, you will see the more extension in the spring. So we can compare the extension. And fourth one, place one in the right hand of the pan of a beam. Yeah, if you see, this is the beam balance. This is one pan. This is the beam balance. And the other in the left hand of the pan, the one which is ha having the more weight will go down. And the other will go up. So this is also a correct way. So which method gives comparison of two masses? So it's three and four. So C is the correct option. Three and four. Okay, the next question. And students, one more uh, important thing before going further please do subscribe to my channel because your subscription really motivates me to make such videos so please do like and subscribe thank you very much so now continuing with our video <coughs> fifth question fifth an object in a space probe probe above the earth weighs 3.5 newton okay weight is 3.5 newton the gravitational field strength at the height of the space probe is 7 newton per gauge Okay, gravitation, gravitation, the gravitational field strength on the Earth's surface is 9.8 Newton per kg. So this is we all know. What are the mass and the weight of an object on the Earth's surface? Okay, so we have to find on the Earth's surface. <coughs> see, first of all, we can calculate the mass because see, we know that W equals mg. Here, what is W? W is given as 3.5 into mass g above the Earth's surface is 7. So, what will be mass? 3.5 divided by 7 is the mass, which is actually 1 by 2. So, this is 0 0.5 kg. And we all know that mass remains the same. Whether you are in a space or any other place in, in the space, the mass or on the surface of the earth, mass will remain the same. So, mass is 0 0.5 kg. 0 0.5 kg. Now, gravitational field strength on earth's surface is... 9.8 newton so we can find the weight is equals to mg which is 0 0.5 n2 g is 9.8 <coughs> so this is 0 0.5 to 9.8 is 4.9 newton so on the surface what is the mass 0 0.5 kg and the weight is 4.9 newton so fifth b is the correct option <coughs> okay now now moving on to the sixth question a cyclist is traveling in a straight line along a horizontal road at a constant speed. Okay, so see, constant speed. It's not accelerating. It's a constant speed. A constant driving force F <coughs> acts on the cyclist in the forward direction. So, see, this is the driving force F. Which statement about the magnitude of... Now, frictional force, we know that frictional force will always act in the opposite direction. <laughs> Take this as small f. Acting on the cyclist in... <coughs> Acting on the cyclist is correct. Okay. The magnitude is equals to F. So see. See this is the important point. Constant speed. Constant speed means its acceleration is zero. So that means the net force should be zero. So the net force should be zero. That means this forward force should be equals to the backward force. So this F equals to F. Means the force of friction should be equal in magnitude of F. I think A is the correct one. Okay. The magnitude is smaller than F but greater than zero. No. Because that, that has to be exactly equal. <clears throat> so these are not possible. The magnitude is greater than F. The magnitude is 0. No, not possible. Because of the constant speed. So these two forces will be equal. <clears throat> okay. Seventh. A spring has an unstretched length of 3 cm. Okay. When a force of 60 Newton is applied to the spring, its length increases to 5 cm. Okay. 
the limit of proportionality is not exceeded what is the spring constant of the spring okay they have given you the limit of proportionality like, like <clears throat> they are within the limit of uh, proportionality and what is the constant spring constant of the spring so see the formula is f is equals to kx where k is that spring constant f is the force which is applied over here 60 newton and x is the extension so see original length was 3 centimeter now it increases to 5 so what is the extension extension is 5 minus 3 that means it has been extended by 2 centimeter Okay, because original was 3 and now is 4, so the extension of 2 cm. Now, substituting in this formula, force is 60 equals k, x is 2. Okay, so this is actually multiplication and then you cross multiply. So, what is k? 60 by 2, this is equals to k, which is 30 Newton per centimeter. So, <clears throat> seventh D is the correct option. Now, question 8. The diagram shows the minimum force F1, okay, acting vertically on a lever, required to lift a heavy log of weight W. As you can see, this is the force applied, and this is the weight, okay. The log needs to be lifted by a smaller force than F1, okay. It means, means now you require a less force than F1. The diagram shows the changes, try it, okay. So these are the, the changes, try it. Each diagram has only one change from the original diagram. Okay. In each case, F2 is the minimum force required to lift the log. That means <clears throat> when you change one thing, so the force is F2 and this force of F2, F2 should be less than F1. Okay. So first of all, the point to be noted is that so that to apply a lesser amount of force, you can increase this. You can increase the length of this part to so then that a less force will be applied. And second is that the force should be applied. If you apply the force in a perpendicular direction, then it will give a greater effect. So as we can see from the diagram, as you can see from the diagram, uh, see, in this case, you can clearly see they have increased the length of the sliver. So yes, P, I think, is the our choice. And similarly, F to C, they have made, made an angle of 90 degrees. Even though the uh, the length of this lever is same, but this is 90 degree, Q is also a choice, but not R. You can see they have decreased the length of the lever and also means they have decreased it. If you compare it with the original one, this one, they have decreased the length and also this doesn't make an angle of 90 degree. So it's P and Q. So P and Q is <clears throat> 8B part. That's question number 8. Uh, B is the correct value. Okay, ninth one. A ball of mass 0 0.25 kg. Okay, the mass is 0 0.25 kg. Hits a wall at a speed of 16 meter per second. It then rebounds back along its original path at a speed of 12 meter per second. Okay, what is the impulse experienced by the ball during its impact with the wall? See, impulse is what? Impulse is change in momentum. <clears throat> so this is change in momentum okay now change in momentum is what m v means m remains the same v is the final velocity minus m u u is the initial velocity you can take m common so this will be v minus u means final minus initial now you see <clears throat> the ball is moving at a 16 meter per second in this direction okay this is 16 now a rebound means its velocity is the direction is though its magnitude of velocity is 12 but direction of the velocity is completely opposite okay so see how to find the change if we are taking this direction from left to right direction as positive so this will be 16 16 change in velocity will be 16 and this direction as negative so this the velocity of this will be minus 12 so 16 minus of minus 12 that is 28 so change in velocity is actually 28 meter per second or if you consider this as the final velocity see if you consider 12 as the final velocity so what will be the <coughs> change in velocity see this will be minus 12 because we are taking this direction negative this direction as negative so this will be minus 12 final minus initial because this is the positive direction 
so which is minus 28 meter per second okay though minus sign just tells you the direction minus doesn't means that this minus 28 is less than this 28 minus 28 means is just this is the change in the direction so what you will take you will take the modulus 28 so impulse will be is the change in momentum mass is 0 0.25 and change in velocity is into 28 so 20, 0 0.25 into 28 you substitute in your calculator this is 7 newton second so ninth d is the correct one <coughs> okay tenth one a bicycle braking system transfers energy from kinetic energy store to the internal energy store okay from kinetic to internal energy store braking system a motor converts energy from mechanical sorry chemical energy which is stored in the battery to kinetic energy store what enables these energy transfer braking system so this braking system is the mechanical work and motor is the electrical work see in braking system it is the mechanical work mechanical means when you are pressing the brake so it's basically the mechanical work and in motor see motor needs electricity to convert because motor needs electricity to run or you can say electric energy to mechanical energy so that's why motor for this motor is the electrical work so of so for question d sorry for question 10 d is the correct option so now question number 11th okay now the question 11th is research is being carried out to produce electrical energy from the fusion of hydrogen nuclei okay which row shows two types of problem in designing a fusion reactor so students first of all you should know in fusion reaction in fusion reaction you need a very high temperature so either c or d is correct <coughs> temperature needed is very high now why obtain a high why obtaining a high density of hydrogen nuclei is difficult first of all they are saying nuclei are negatively charged we know that nu nuclei are not negatively charged they are positively charged hence option d is the correct one in which temperature needed is very high and the nuclei are positively charged and they repel each other <coughs> okay the next one question number 12th uh, the engine of a motor vehicle develops a large power now you know what is power <clears throat> power is in which there is a time factor the power is actually work done upon time okay <clears throat> now which statement is correct the driving force acting on the vehicle must be large i don't think so the engine must have a very large volume not necessary see the engine must transfer large amount of energy every second now see every second so transferring large amount to every second means it is giving large power so c is the correct one and lastly d the vehicle must be very fast no it's it, it, it is not matching this so 12th c part is the correct one now question number 13th uh, the graph shows how the pressure due to a liquid <coughs> varies uh, with the depth uh, just a second i'm thinking there is some it's lagging varies with the depth beneath the liquid surface the gravitational field strength g is g is 9.8 newton per kg now see <coughs> you see the graph as the no no the depth increases as you can see as the depth increases the pressure due to liquid also increases and we all know the formula that pressure is uh, this is h rho g where h is basically the depth rho is the density <clears throat> or you can use the formula h d g that is the same thing d or rho that's a as you can use the formula h d g this is the density and this is the accession due to gravity now from this graph you have to take a point take this point okay so <clears throat> if you take this point what's the pressure over here is 4000 so substituting pressure as 4000 equals depth h is the depth depth over here is 0 0.50 0 0.50 this row which means we have to find the density and g's they have said to take gs 9.8 now <clears throat> what will be row we cross multiply so this is 4000 upon 0 0.50 into 9.8 that equals to the the density so if you substitute this in calculator so you get this as uh, 4000 upon this as it's coming out to be 816.32 okay 
So, <clears throat> uh, see, among this value, I think rounding it off, it's it's the B. B is the correct option. So, question number 13, B, the correct one. Now, 14th. What is the lowest possible temperature? Absolute zero. You know that absolute zero is actually zero Kelvin. It's zero Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius. And what happens to the energy of the particles at this temperature? So lowest possible temperature is minus 273, as you know. So it's either among A or B. C and D are not possible. Now, <clears throat> particle energy. Particles have least kinetic energy. This is correct. Their kinetic energy is the least at at this temperature as absolute zero the kinetic energy is the least and the particles are zero no no it's not zero gravitational potential energy because even at this temperature they still have mass they still have mass so the zero gravitational potential energy is not possible so our a is the correct one particles have least kinetic energy <coughs> okay next one which statement about the particles of the substance after condensation is correct See, condensation is basically when vapor, vapors gets converted to liquid, so it's liquid. <clears throat> the particles, they are close to, first of all, in vapors, you know, they are far away. But in liquid, they are closer. Uh, closer means as compared to vapor. Okay. So they are close to each other, they are close to each other, either A or B. C and D cannot because they are saying they are far apart, they are far apart, not possible. Because condensation, liquid to vapor and liquid particles are much closer than the vapor particles. Okay. A. They are close to each other and slide over each other. So, I think A is the correct one because they can slide over each other. Now, let's see B. They are close to each other and vibrate. See, vibrating about the fixed point is for the solids, not for the liquids. And we and <clears throat> in the question, it said condensation. So, vapors to liquid. So, B point is not correct because that's for solid, not for liquid. Hence, they are close to each other and slide over each other. Okay, question number 16. Two otherwise identical cars, okay, one black and one white, are at the same initial temperature. The cars are left in bright sunshine and their temperature increases. During the night, their temperature decreases. Okay, which car shows the great range of temperature increase and which car shows the great rate of temperature decrease? See, <coughs> One thing that you should know is it is the black color. Okay. It is the black color which absorbs more light. It absorbs. Absorbs more light as well as it radiates also. It radiates also fast. Both absorption and radiation is very fast. So it's basically in case this will be case A only. Uh, case A only because you <clears throat> greater rate of temperature increase because absorption power of black is like more and in fact the radiation is also more in case of a black color so greater rate of temperature decrease will be black only so 16th a part next question is 17th a drop of water from a tap falls onto the surface of some water of constant depth okay so this you can see view from the above as you know this goes like this Water waves spread out on the surface of water. Which statement is correct? See, first of all, as you know that in in, in this case, in this case, these waves are the they they go like this. So these are what these are transverse wave. Okay, these these are transverse waves which go in the form of crest and trough. Hmm? So A or B cannot be correct because they are saying waves are longitudinal. So they are not longitudinal. They are transverse waves. Okay, now between C and D. <coughs> The waves are transverse and travels at the same direction in all, at, sorry, at the same speed in all direction. Yeah, this is the correct one because their speed in all the direction is same, is constant. Okay. D part, the waves are transverse and travel more quickly in one direction than in others. No, no, no. When the speed is same, that means it's same in all direction. So 17th C part is correct. Moving on to the D one. <clears throat> Each point F is one focal length, okay, one focal length, this is one focal length. From the center of the lens, each point 2F, 2F is two focal length from center of the lens, okay. Which diagram shows a converging lens being used as magnifying lens? Okay, magnifying lens, I think in these two cases, in this case, image is very short. In this case, it's not so big. Magnifying is in, do, in these two cases, but this is more magnified. So I think D is the correct one because as you can see, the image is also erect. 
first of all when we are using as a magnifying glass you should get a direct image and you can see the object is between the focus and the optical center so d <coughs> is the correct one uh, 18th uh, the part d is the correct one which can be used as a magnifying lens okay next one a monochromatic a monochromatic ray of green light in air enters a block of glass right which property of the ray of light always remains the same as it moves from air to glass wavelength speed frequency direction see <clears throat> see if you consider this as a different medium so you know that the light changes the direction okay so direction changes it changes now why does the direction changes because light has different speed in different medium the speed is also changing and why it has different speed in different medium because wavelength changes as it travel from one medium to another so what remains the same is the frequency so 19th c is the correct one question number 20th a narrow beam of white light passes through a prism and is dispersed into a spectrum okay which row is correct so you have to basically answer three to one see if you remember <coughs> that in a prism if you remember the pattern v i b g y o r okay <coughs> so and the lights that they are giving you is blue yellow red okay so uh, see it, it doesn't mean option a is correct what i'm saying is that the color that they have given you is blue yellow and red okay so what will be at number three so color three color three will be see as we go it's a blue so color three is blue yellow is two <clears throat> and the first one is red two and this one is red so color one red color two yellow color three blue c is the correct one so students this is an important thing you should remember this with your wallet indigo blue green yellow orange and red okay now the next question so now question 21 okay a student writes four statements matching a communication system to the region of the electromagnetic spectrum that it uses to transmit signals okay which statement is correct a wireless internet uses visible wavelength no it's not correct wireless internet uses radio frequency mobile phone uses x-rays no they also use radio frequency cable television uses infrared wavelength yes cable television uses infrared wavelength bluetooth uses ultraviolet wavelength no it uses microwave radiations okay so 21st c is correct <clears throat> now 22nd a ship sounds a horn when it is 790 meter from a cliff okay a, a passenger on the ship hears the echo 4.8 seconds later okay that uh, time is 4.8 seconds later what is the speed of the sound see now <clears throat> you have to calculate the speed of the sound so let's let's you know let's uh, go to the whiteboard and let's uh, make a picture of it see considering this as a cliff okay and uh, uh, this as the water here is the ship now ship sends the signals so this distance from over here is uh, considered 790 meter now after reflection it goes back and from which this ships will receive the signal so basically it has covered twice the distance so twice the distance 790 into 2 means how much distance it has covered 1580 meter is the distance that it had covered okay now what's the time as uh, now oh sorry for this now let's go back to the question paper the time is 4.8 seconds okay so time is time is 4.8 seconds okay so what's they are asking they are asking the speed so what's the speed speed will be the speed will be distance upon time so what's the distance distance is 1580 meter upon time is 4.8 now if you do 1580 upon 4.8 that comes out to be 329.167 meter per second in my calculator so going back to the paper which i rounded off will be 330 meter per second so <clears throat> for the question 22 b part is the correct one question 23 which row gives the metal used to make the core of an electromagnet and one property of the electromagnet okay see electromagnet is basically uses iron it doesn't use steel because that's it will make a permanent magnet 
it's iron and it's a temporary magnet so 23 b part is the correct one because you know in an electromagnet it should be a temporary magnet because what's an electromagnet when you switch on the current it <coughs> behaves as a magnet and you switch off the current it stops behaving as a magnet so basically you have the total control to it so that's why temporary magnet because permanent magnet will be of no use because once it is a permanent magnet then you will lose control so the total point of being electromagnet is zero so it's b iron and made used for making temporary magnet question number 24 a plastic rod and a dry cloth are uncharged okay the rod is now rubbed with the cloth and they both become charged both become charged the rod becomes negatively charged because some charged particles move from cloth to the rod to the rod what is the charge on the cloth and which particles moves in a charging process see you have cloth and rod so when you rub them we know that during friction it is the electrons which are transferred it's only the electrons which are transferred and what are electrons electrons are negatively charged so see, when the, this cloth is losing electron, because on whole, this cloth is electrically neutral. Okay, total positive charge should be equal to total negative charge, but now it is losing electrons. So when it is losing electrons, <clears throat> so that means this will be positive charge. So the cloth will be uh, positive charge, positive charge. And what particle has moved? As we have discussed, electrons, 24th C is the correct option. Okay, moving on to the next question. 25. A student does an experiment to investigate the resistance of a metal wire. Okay, the graph shows the result of the experiment. Okay, so this is the re uh, resistance. And you can see as this X thing is being increased, the resistance is decreasing sharply. Okay, what is plotted on the X axis, the diameter of the wire? This can be, so I am taking this as an option. This can be because you know that resistance of a wire is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area of cross section so when the diameter is increasing the area is increasing and hence the resistance will decrease because this is inversely proportional the length of the wire no because it is directly proportional so if this quantity will increase the resistance will also increase temperature of the wire no because temperature is also directly proportional to the resistance so as you increase the temperature of any metal its resistance will also increase and over here as you can see if you are increasing x the resistance is decreasing and the current in the wire see current does not have a very big effect on the resistance so 25th a is the correct one next is <clears throat> 26th okay the cost of electrical energy is 0 0.25 for each unit of this is one kilowatt hour a 2200 watt heater is switched on for 48 minutes okay 2200 watt heater okay what is the cost of the use so basically you know we have to convert this to kilowatt and this times to r because unit is given as 0 0.25 dollars in one kilowatt hour so it's 2200 watt so if you divide it by a thousand which is 2.2 kilowatt and this is kilowatt sorry and this is 48 minutes if you divide it by 60 you will get hours 48 by 60 if we do it in the calculator i am getting 0 0.8 hours this will be a so what is kilowatt hour 2.2 into 0 0.8 so that will be that will be 1.76 kilowatt hour okay so this kilowatt hour and we know that when the cost of one unit which is one kilowatt hour is 0 0.25 dollars so the cost of this will be you just multiply with 0 0.25 into 1.76 so in the calculator this comes out to be 0 0.44 0 0.44 dollars okay so 26th a is the correct option okay moving on to the next question 27th yeah 27th a table describes four different resistance wire they are all made from same metal okay they all are from the same metals which wire has the smallest resistance okay they have given you length and the diameter see as we have already discussed resistance is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area of cross section and it is made up of same metal so they are saying smallest resistance smallest resistance means the least length you know 
okay least length and more diameter so least length is among a b and more diameter is b as you can see the length is 2 which is the least and diameter is 1.5 which is the highest again resistance is directly proportional to length resistance is directly proportional to length but resistance is inversely proportional to area of cross section next question the, the circuit shows shown contains three switches and four lamps pqrs okay switch one two three and four lamps pqrs which switch must be closed to light only lamps p and r see for the lamps p the switch one should be closed so that the current is flowing current can flow in this direction okay so the circuit is completed also if switch one is closed it will not go to lamp q but yes it will go to lamp r and it will go like this so lamp r will also write light and we have to light only p and r so i think only switch one yeah a part only switch one you can see 28th a part is the correct one 29th <clears throat> the diagram shows the magnetic field around a solenoid carrying electric current okay this is a solenoid magnetic field what happens to the strength of magnetic field and the distance between the field lines when the current is increased see when you increase the current see when you increase the current the strength of magnetic field magnetic field strength okay when you increase the current the magnetic field strength also increases so increasing the current will increase the magnetic field strength among c and d strength of magnetic field strength will increase and the distance between the field lines see when there are stronger magnetic field so you can say that the distance between the magnetic field lines will be less because you know in a strong magnetic field there is more density means the field lines are closer to each other so if the field lines are like this so this have a strong magnetic field if the field lines are like this this they have a weak magnetic field so when you are increasing the current the magnetic field strength will increase but the distance between the line will decrease hence the c part 29th c part is the correct one okay 30th uh, the diagram shows the wire hanging freely between the poles of the magnet poles of a magnet okay this is a wire magnet north south there is a current in the wire and the action shown is going down the magnet and the current causes a force to act on the wire okay it's obvious when a current carrying wire plays inside the magnetic field it experiences a force so see first of all in this you have to apply fleming apply fleming left hand rule okay you know fleming left hand rule where the thumb represents the force the forefinger will represent the field and the middle finger will represent the <coughs> current so if you do the forefinger in north to south direction and current downward you will see that the thumb will be going into the page away from you so 30th a part is the correct one okay moving on to the next one now question 31 which component forms part of a dc motor but not a simple moving coil ac generator so see we know that in ac generator <coughs> we have slip rings this is slip rings okay and in dc motor that's called the split rings or the commutator so basically d is the correct answer for question number 31 okay question 32 a transformer has 5500 turns on a primary coil <clears throat> and 500 turns on a secondary coil okay the output of the secondary coil is 110 volt and is connected to a heater the transformer is 100 percent efficient that's fine the heater produces a power of 132 watts what is the current in the primary coil okay so we know that in a transformer the ratio is actually np by ns where n is the number of turns in primary coil ns is the number of turns in secondary coil that is equals to vp which is the voltage of primary coil upon the voltage of secondary coil so we have given the number of turns in the primary coil which is 5500 substituting the value 5500 uh, in, in the secondary coil is 500 so this is 500 okay this voltage the output of the secondary coil is 110 volt so this secondary coil we have to find the <coughs> voltage of the primary coil so 
this is 110 now what will be the voltage of primary coil you cross multiply so this will be this will be uh, 5500 times 110 upon you do 5 500 actually 500 that equals VP so that's the primary voltage so if you solve this 1 2 1 2 and you cancel this this is 110 so 11 into 110 is 1 2 1 0 volts so this is the <coughs> primary voltage now it's saying what's the current in the primary coil see we also know the formula power is V into I okay so what's the power power is 132 watts and we have calculated the uh, potential which is 1210 times I so what is I? I is 132 upon 1210 so 132 upon 1210 so this will be uh, if you put it in the calculator this will be 0 0.11 ampere so 30 second A is the A is the correct answer <coughs> now next question 33 the scattering of alpha particles from a thin gold foil produces the following observations okay most of the alpha particle passes pass through the foil okay most of the alpha particles are virtually undeflected a small fraction of the alpha particles are deflected through large angles a very small fraction of alpha particles bounce back from the foil okay we all know that what conclusion does not follow from this observation okay most of the mass of the gold atom is in the nucleus yeah that's correct because so a small fraction of alpha particle are deflected through large angles. Most of the atom is empty space here because they pass through the foil undeflected. A nucleus consists of proton and neutrons. Okay, we can take this point 33C part because see, it's fine. Nucleus must be uh, similarly D. Nucleus must be charged. It is following because you know alpha particles are what? Alpha particles are positively charged. So if they are deflected, <coughs> they can be deflected only by the positive charge only. So the nucleus must be charged and that should be positive but there is no point <coughs> which suggests that there are neutrons so that's why c points in fact you know neutrons were discovered after some years after like you know after <coughs> some years because of its neutral nature so that's why c is the for third question 33 c is the correct one okay 34th the nuclide of a chlorine has following symbol cl 3517 what is the nuclear number of this nucleide of chlorine? So see, we know that <coughs> 35 is the nucleon number. That represents the number of protons plus neutrons. Where 17 is the atomic number, that just represents the number of protons. So number of nucleons is 35. So for question 34, 35 is the correct answer. Okay. Question number 35. Which change is occurring in a nucleus during beta emission? Now see, <coughs> beta emission is basically the emission of an electron. An electron and neutron becomes one proton, no. A electron, no. A electron and a proton, no. A neutron, yeah. C is the correct one, see. Actually, in case of beta emission, now it's, you, <coughs> you should know that it's a neutron that becomes one proton and one electron. So, as you know that, a neutron, a neutron is N10. Now, it changes to... Uh, a proton which is one actually one mass and one charge and an electron which has zero mass and minus one charge now you see this equation is balanced because over here this is one one plus zero is one and this is zero one <coughs> minus one is zero so which is balanced the total nuclear number and the, the atomic charge is balanced and this is the beta particle so this is what this is the beta particle which is emitted so it's so question number 35 c is the correct one <coughs> okay now, a graph shows how the count rate re registered by a counter near to a sample of radioactive isotopes changes over a period of few days. Okay, the background count rate is 5 counts per minute. So, here yeah, from the graph we can see. <clears throat> so, what we have to find? We have to find the half-life of the isotopes. So, basically half-life is the time taken <clears throat> for the substance to become half of itself. And or if we are measuring it in terms of counts per minute, so that will be to become half of the counts per minute. So as we can see, this is what? 10 counts per minute, the time is 6 days. And here it is written that, that it is, the background count is 5 per minute. So from becoming 10 to 5, how many days? Means, means half of itself, how many days it had taken? <coughs> 2 days, as you can see, 6. This is 1 day, 2 days, so 2 day. 
two days so half life of the isotope is two days so question 36 a is the <coughs> correct answer okay 37th which row about the orbits of earth and the moon is correct now see a b c d okay approximate time from the earth to orbit the sun we all know it's 365 days and approximate time for the moon to orbit the earth is 30 days yeah that's a straightforward answer 37th d part is the correct answer <coughs> okay which statement about the orbits of comet is correct okay comet c first of all comet have elliptical orbit c if this is and the sun this is the sun sun so <coughs> comet is like this is the orbit usually the comets follow okay so c and d is not the option because they are saying circular orbits so it is between a and b comets have elliptical orbits and the sun is at the center of orbit no sun is not at the center of orbit as you can see this is not the center of this elliptical orbit the center must be somewhat over here so comets have elliptical orbit and the sun is not at the center of orbit 38th b <coughs> is the correct answer okay 39th which row describes which row describes the power source of a stable star now see for the stable star <coughs> we all know that for the stable star it is actually the nuclear fusion nuclear fusion nuclear fusion which is taking place so the type of nuclear reaction is fusion a and b is not possible because it's saying fission and what goes it's changed hydrogen to helium so the fuel is basically hydrogen for the stable star so question 39 c is the correct one okay <clears throat> 40th the last one which quantity can can be determined using the brightness of a supernova in a distant galaxy now see <clears throat> the speed at which the galaxy is moving away from earth okay supernova in a distant galaxy the distance of the galaxy from earth the hubble constant the age of universe no 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 i think b is the correct one the distance of galaxy from the earth see <clears throat> this information is crucial for calculating the distance to the galaxy <clears throat> now what does it relate it relates to the inverse square law <clears throat> you know what's the inverse inverse square law of brightness that more farther the <clears throat> that more the distance of any star or supernova lesser will be its brightness now by comparing the observed brightness the observed brightness during the supernova apparent magnitude <clears throat> of the supernova and comparing it with the known or you can say the intrinsic brightness or the absolute magnitude the astronomers can estimate the distance to the galaxy question number 40 <clears throat> b part is the correct one so that's the end of our video so hope students you have enjoyed it and please do like share and subscribe if you like the video so we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching till then goodbye